Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Craig and I'm a software developer in the UK and in this video we're going to be talking about div and span elements. Specifically, we'll look at what these are exactly, why we use divs and spans and most importantly, how we use them. We'll then work through a little simple practical example of applying them to a file with an existing pre-made structure to separate out the content. The link to this file is in the description below and as always you can grab it from either GitHub or CodePen. We're on all the main social media platforms so if you want to join us on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook then we'd be happy to see you there and the links as well are in the description below. If you're finding the content useful please remember to smash the like button and subscribe. We're posting a couple of videos a week so remember to click the bell and get notified when these videos drop. The more engagement the channel gets then the more YouTube's algorithm will get hold of it and put it in front of people that can benefit from the content. Okay, so we've used the div tag a little bit in previous videos, but we haven't gone into much detail about what a div is exactly. We've never really discussed it in depth, what it's used for, why we need it, and why it's so important when structuring our web pages. If you inspect any web page, you'll often find them absolutely littered with div tags. We also used the span briefly in our last video when we built a form from scratch. We used the spans inside our field set legend so we could isolate some inline text and style it different to the other text within the same legend as we see here. But it was the CSS that did the styling and not the span. The span just acted as a separator or a divider. So divs and spans don't really do anything on their own except separate content and you won't see any tangible changes on the page when we employ them just by themselves. We see that in our form if we remove the CSS. The span is still in place but we don't see any tangible changes to our text content that is wrapped inside the span. The same would be true if we wrapped some content in a div. So in our form, I'm gonna cut out the labels and inputs in this first section and that's called your details and I'll add a div and then I'm going to pop our content back inside the div. Now we have this extra div element and no discernible change is apparent on the page. The same is true if we add our CSS back in and we see that despite the fact that our HTML has actually changed in that we have these name and email inputs and their respective labels inside a div, everything on the page in the browser remains the same. So far, all of the elements we've seen, H1 to H6, P or paragraph elements, tables and the elements that go with them, links, images, lists, forms and the nested form elements such as the uh, various input types all do something to the content that is inside of them in some way. They all have some discernible effect on the content. This isn't quite so apparent with divs and spans so you might be wondering why would we use them? Well. When I want to know something to do with front-end web development, I would usually turn to MDN. MDN is an almanac of sorts for all things to do with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. This MDN page in particular on the div tag, which I've linked below in the description, tells us that a div or division is a generic container for content and does not represent anything by itself. You can use it to group elements for purposes such as styling and using class or ID attributes. So let's remember those two points for grouping elements and for styling. So divs are going to be incredibly handy for us when we're working with CSS. But for now, let's just remember that a div is a division or container you would use to group certain elements together and we can make use of the div to target those grouped elements with CSS. I also have the MDN page open here on the span element and it tells us that the span element is an inline container which does not inherently represent anything. We can use it to group elements and it is like a div, but a div is a block level element whereas a span is an inline element. So that's interesting. We have a clear difference between how spans and divs behave. The div being a block level element and a span being an inline element. We've covered the difference between block and inline elements in previous videos. So if you haven't seen that video, then the link is up there. So please check that out. We're gonna head over to VS Code now and we'll do some work with divs and spans and explore what we found out on MDN a little further. And the best way for me to demonstrate the use of divs and spans is with CSS, which I've pre-written. I don't expect you to understand it just yet and I will refrain from explaining it in this video as the goal here is to really hone in on divs and spans and how we would use them. The styles that you will see on the page will just serve to highlight what is a div and what is a span and I'll provide the CSS in the description 
So I have a folder open in VS Code called divs-spans. I have an index.html file and a CSS file that's called style.css. The CSS code that's in the style.css file is just some simple stuff that is going to help me demonstrate to you how we would use divs and spans. So it will make it clearer on the page in the browser when a div is being employed and when a span is being employed. It's nothing to worry about just now. Just know that we have a page of content here, a list, some headings, an image, some paragraph text, another list and a form. It's all stuff we've seen before, nothing fancy here. And one thing that I hope is apparent from the comments that I've put in is that we have a series of very distinct sections in our file that we can divide up into groups of related content. So we have a navigation section, a header, an about and product section, a contact form and a footer. Our goal is to use the div element to divide these distinct sections up and that is what we're going to do right now. Essentially, we'll take a distinct section of our page and we're going to nest all of the code that is associated with that inside a div to separate it from all of the other content. So we're going to basically take it all and drop it into a container of sorts. It's like picking it up and putting it in a jar. Ordinarily, as we discussed earlier, the div won't do anything by itself and we'll see no change on the page. And the same is true of spans. We'd use classes and IDs usually to target these divs and then style those that we've targeted. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not using IDs and classes as that will likely be the next video. I just want to explain divs and spans in this video. So I'm applying styles directly to the div and directly to the span element using element selectors. And if you don't know what element selectors are or what they mean, don't worry, we will explain those when the time comes. And this will be very early on in the CSS videos. The divs will have a red border around them with red text on a pinkish background and the spans will have blue borders and blue text on a light blue background so they'll be visually quite apparent on the page. We'll be able to see quite clearly where our divs are and where our spans are. So I'm just going to work my way down the page, grouping our content in divs, and we'll start with this navigation section. We have these links, which are currently dead links. When they're working, they will take us to particular sections of our web page. This is a clear and distinct section of our page, so we will want to group this together and put it in a division or a div to separate it from the other content. Before any of you comment saying that there are other more semantic elements that we could use, yes, I do know, and there are videos on semantic elements on the way. The HTML5 standard gives us lots of new elements that work just like divs, but they make it clearer what each section is. They're more descriptive. So for example, we have a nav element that came with HTML5, and we could use that to indicate a navigation section. But for now, we're just trying to get a firm understanding of divs and spans. And in the next video or the one after, we will explore semantic HTML5 tags and we will show how we can divide our content up with elements that give us a little more meaning as to what that section of code is for. So I'm going to go in my head section now and comment out the link to the style sheet. So the styles will not apply when I save. When I want them to apply, I'll uncomment the link to the style sheet. So we'll just create a div element using Emmet and we'll put div and we'll hit tab and then we'll create some space in the div and we'll move our navigation markup and our content inside. So if I hit save, we see absolutely no change on the page. But if we go to our CSS, as I mentioned, we have some styles being applied directly to the div using a div element selector. So I'll bring back in the link style sheet and there we go. We now have this red box which is our div. And this content is now separated from the other content. We can see quite clearly what content here is in a div and which content isn't. The header section below is clearly a distinct section. And again, there are more descriptive semantic elements that we could use. But here, we'll pop all of this content into a div. When we save, we see that it's in a red box and it's separated from the rest of the content on the page. We'll do the same next to the about section, the product section and the contact form and also the footer. And these are all very distinct sections of our page that we would want to be isolated from the rest of our content when we are creating our markup. So we'll put all of them into their own divs. So we're going to make four divs this time just to speed the process up a bit. And we're going to use the Emmet shortcut of div multiplied by four. 
and that will create four divs for us. I'll then highlight all of our code, each of the four sections that we're going to put inside of the div. So I'll highlight them all and then cut them all out using control or command and X. We'll then create multiple cursors, one inside each div, create some space and we'll paste all of our content in. And as we have four cursors and four cutout items, then VS Code will paste in one item to each cursor. Now we have all of our content inside its own div divided from the rest of the content on the page. So if we save, we will see that reflected in the browser where each div is read. And we can also see that divs, like all elements, are in fact boxes, which is a concept that we will discuss in the CSS section. Okay, so that's divs, which are divisions or containers that we would use to group certain elements together. And we can make use of the div to target those grouped elements with CSS. We're doing that in a very simple way here making our divs red. Next, we'll have a look at spans, and a span is a container, just like a div, but it's a little bit different. A div is a block level element, which, as we know, always starts on a new line. As we can see in the browser here, there aren't any divs sitting next to each other. They're all starting on their own line, and one div follows the one previously. A span is an inline element, so anything inside of a span does not need to have its own line on the web page, and it will not push content that follows it to its own line either. So what if I wanted some part of our div to be blue rather than red? In other words, what if I wanted one small bit of content, let's say a sentence of text that we wanted to style differently? Well, for that, we would use a span. And if you remember, in the last video on forms, we had these field sets that had legends in which we had some text that was preceded by a number and the number was styled differently to the rest of the text. And we did that by wrapping the number in a span, separating it from the other text inside the label. So I'll choose a sentence. Let's say the first one in our about us section and I'm going to enclose it in some span tags. In the CSS, you'll see that I have some styles applied to the span which will turn anything wrapped by it blue. So it's going to stand out visually to us among the red divs on the page. So I'll cut out that first sentence and I will add some span tags. And then I'm just going to pop the sentence back inside the span. And if I save, you will see quite clearly on the page where the span is and the rest of the div retains the styles that were applied to the whole of the div. And we notice that it is an inline element and it isn't starting on a new line and it isn't pushing any other content that follows down to the next line. We can demonstrate this again by taking, say, the first three words of the next sentence, cutting them and putting them in a div and pasting those inside the div. And we see that the div is pushing the content that follows it to the line below. So once again, we see here quite clearly the div is a block level element and the span is an inline element. Okay, so let's say we wanted the third link in our navigation section to appear differently to the rest. Again, one solution that we could use is that we could wrap the content in a span. So I'll cut out where it says products, I'll put in a span and I will paste it back inside. And now if we save, we see again where our span is and how we have used it to separate content and style it differently to the surrounding content. So there are multiple differences between divs and spans. The most notable difference we've seen between the two is how elements are displayed. To reiterate this, again, I will repeat it. A div is a block level element, whereas a span is an inline element. As the div is a block level element, it visually isolates a section of the document on the page. The span element displays its content in line with the surrounding content and also it may contain other inline components. So if we tried to nest a div inside a span, it just wouldn't work. We can of course override the default behavior with CSS, though the permitted contents of each element may not be changed. For example, regardless of CSS, a span element may not contain any block level elements or block level children. Okay, so there are multiple differences between divs and spans. The most notable difference between the two is in how elements are displayed. To reiterate, a div is a block level element, whereas a span is an inline element. As the div is a block level element, it visually isolates a section of the page. The span element displays its content in line with the surrounding content, and also it may only contain other inline level components. So if we try to nest a div inside of a span, then it wouldn't work. We can, of course, 
course, like I always say, override the default display behavior with CSS, although the permitted contents of each element may not be changed. For example, regardless of CSS, a span element may not contain block level children. Okay, so I hope you now know how we use divs and spans and can explain the differences between the two. Going forward, we'll use both divs and spans quite liberally, divs more frequently than spans, so you'll get quite used to grouping content together in them and you'll also get used to having divs which have multiple divs nested inside of them. Say a navbar which has a div for the logo and another for the links. In the next video, we'll explore classes and IDs, and following that, we'll take a look at some elements that were introduced with HTML5. These are called semantic elements, and they provide meaning as well as structure, and they tell us what a section's purpose actually is. So remember to smash that like button, subscribe, comment, share, and all of that good stuff, and reach out to me on social media if you have any questions. The details are in the description below. So thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you in the next video on classes and IDs, which you can click up here in the corner right now.